the stance, how we present ourselves in combat is everything. I don't care if you're an MMA fighter, boxer, kickboxer, Thai boxer, wrestler, or just some guy who has to defend his wife and children uh, on the streets. How we present ourselves, how we stand, gives us the ability to prepare for that incoming attack as well as respond accordingly. Stop. I can't let you get close. Can you hear my Plain and simple, if I am not in a proper position to fight, my hands are not proper position, my hips are not a proper position, my feet aren't in a proper position, I don't care how hard you can punch, how fast you can kick, how good your takedowns are, you can't fight, plain and simple. This is your fighting stance, you've got nothing. Okay. Start breaking down that stance and how we can get into it. We're gonna use my grid system here. Uh, simple thing, but oddly enough, one of the best things I ever put down in the gym, uh, not only as a teaching aid to help people understand and get in a proper position, but also as a drilling aid for footwork, circling, putting our footwork with our punches, kicks, etc. Let's just look at some basic structure. I like strength training. I like the idea of structure. That if I learn to build structure in a gym, I can easily start translating to how I fight. How I typically get people to get in the stance, is that picture there, I have them picture they're in a squat rack, right? I've got the squat rack in front of me, I've got my feet and my squat stance a little wider than my, than wider than my hips, okay? And I'm gonna most pretend I'm finishing that squat where I've got my butt back, hip hinge, my knees bent, my chin kinda hanging in the middle, and I'm just in a nice, easy stance, okay? My opponent's over there, okay? So right now we're in my squat stance, I just finished my squat. And now all I'm gonna do is address my opponent. Rear heel comes off the ground, slight pivot. And now I'm in a basic structure, okay? Well, let's look at this. We started with our feet at a stance that we are very powerful and very athletic, our squat stance, right? I don't wanna be in a sumo squat position where I'm too wide. Some as we'll call this a sissy squat where our legs are too close together. We wanna have this wide leg, all right? Taking my heel off the ground obviously allows me to pivot, but it's like putting the car in drive. Think about a sprinter. Anytime a sprinter needs to run or start in the blocks, that heel's off the ground. He's ready to go, right? Conversely, if I have my flat-footed approach to my opponent, stiff legs, flat-footed, anytime I want to throw a punch, kick, take down, et cetera, I need to get in an athletic position first, and then I can perform my task. Everybody will have to do this when you get this stance. Like, you gotta adjust it a little bit. Kinda find your home base. Let it feel natural to you. If your legs are too close together, you're gonna feel very tippable, right? If your legs are too online, you'll feel very, very vulnerable backwards or forwards. One of the best analogies I ever heard, uh, I believe it was from Andy Norman of Defense Lab, said to me, he's like, you should feel like you're riding a surfboard the whole time, that like your body, you know, not truly like, blah, blah, but like that feeling of like there's this connection to the ground, connection to the surface, that my body can go any way. Another piece of like, I like to think about a stance is where my weight is distributed. Right now my rear heel's off the ground, I'm on the ball of my rear foot. I feel my left heel connected to the ground, but the pressure is more in the ball of my foot, right? It gives me that athletic feel. My weight is shifted in the middle. Sometimes I may shift back, sometimes I may shift forward a little bit. Forgive my vulgarity, but the best way I like to think about it, let's picture I hung a heavy weight off your balls, right? And that weight floats in the center area. I don't want a bouncing back and forth in my legs. I want to kind of have that balance, balance structure. Let's get into our hand position. We'll talk about getting into that stance properly when someone attacks us. And I'm gonna use my good buddy, Bob, as an example. Oh, every time someone walks in my door, I go through typically an intro lesson where I explain the stance process. And I have them picture that Bob is a bad person, right? And if you've been on my channel before, we understand the concept of bubble, right? There's this position, or empty space, I, got, I like to call it the chaos zone between Bob and I. If I can touch Bob or reach out to Bob at any point in time, well, I'm in that chaos zone. That's not good for me. I wanna make sure no matter what, if I am in a situation where my awareness is up, I'm about to get ready to spar, maybe I have a cage fight coming up, I'm not gonna be in a yo fuck you position. I'm I'm not gonna put my hands in my pockets and run away. I'm not gonna just be hanging out in a spot 
where I can easily get uh, nailed. This, where people get too close to each other and get comfortable being in each other's range where I can easily put hands on him and he can easily put hands on me. It's probably the biggest problem I see with students training and actually starting to spar. They don't understand their range. So let's address that right off the bat. First, if I can touch me, that's not a good sign. So I let's picture Bob as an aggressive person and I'm in a street site situation. I'm gonna start in a conversation stance. My hands are basically my workspace. If you police officers, law enforcement, military, we understand this concept that I should be able to reach a tool at any point in time, also bring my hands up to defend myself. You're gonna pull up, left hip forward, placing your right hand on your away hip thusly, giving the illusion that you have a gun, which of course we both know you don't. This person is getting aggressive. We're gonna go back to what we talked about earlier, getting our right foot back, and I'm gonna start with my feet in that box, and I'm gonna drop that right foot back. In our initial stance setup, we may take a bigger, little longer step back for stability. Boom. I want you to think the thought process that this person's coming at you in a self-defense situation. I'm not preemptively striking, per se, yet, all right? That this person's coming, charging, grabbing, etc., hitting. I want a little extra stability in a minute, in the beginning, all right? Our hands are gonna come out in a way for us. It's like, oh my God, all right? I don't wanna lean back, but I wanna think about the concept, like, think about you're almost getting uh, a fear response. The hands come out and open. Our foot will drop back, hands out and open. And if you have, we call this our fence position. If you have a hard time getting in this fence position, a lot of people do, oddly enough, in the beginning. They wanna flare, wing their elbows out, they wanna reach up, or they wanna do things like this. I have a simple rule, temple check. You kinda make a visor for your head. Let that come out, and there's our triangle. And now I'm in a proper fence. Again, from my own sort of conversation going back, boom, I'm creating a lot of space between my opponent and I. One of our favorite self-defense moves we'll steal right from John Jones is the eye jab, right? If someone's charging, boom, I put my hands out and open and right around that eye line, that face line, they're gonna have a high chance of running right into those fingers and quickly, quickly changing the outcome of the fight. So again, we'll be here, we're gonna drop back in a nice, solid fence position. Okay, so let's look at this. I'm a little bit longer legged, okay, so I'm taking a very big stance back. I want to have stability. My weight has lowered a little bit, all right? I may not have the luxury of ability to run right now, right? So I want to make sure that I have, like, stability backwards. If my instinct, which is most people's instinct, let's say someone's charging, start pulling a lead leg back, we try to remove whatever's closest to a, our incoming opponent and bring that leg back. I, every time I do this warm-up drills, this happens, right? I want you guys to think about shifting, boom. Nice, solid structure, good base, hands out and open, all right? From there, it's very important, I can do holder, holder video just on the fence in a high guard position or something called split frame. But when we go from our long distance to close range, it depends on our opponent, right? Let's picture that chaos zone again. If I have my hands occupying the chaos zone, it's much easier for me to defend. If I just stay like this the whole time, or nice and tight, basically allowing him to dominate that chaos zone, come in, and we're just in a brawl at that point in time. But, let's go back to the thought process. He's charging. I've gone backwards, and now I've run into something. Let's say I've run into pole, whatever. I can't move anymore. Well, now I need to be able to switch my guard. I'm not on my guard, I'm gonna take that high hand position. So I take my palms, put it on my forehead, thumbs are still around my temples, and elbows, I'm sorry, my shoulders roll forward on a nice, stable, high guard position. Later, we start split framing, framing, all that from there. So when we think about Bob charging aggressively, we may come from fence, we stay, hey, 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 and now comes the in-pumping punch or attack we may now have to start switching to defend all those angles. Okay, now that we found our stance, most important thing after that is footwork, moving. We could add punches, kicks, and knees, and all that first, but if I can't get my body to move properly, I can't find my footwork, my base, my structure, my stance, well then, all I said earlier, all the ability to throw punches, kicks, knees, it goes right out the door. 